All right, what the heck did I get myself into with all this testing now? Hey, welcome back to Tripod's Garage. Today, we are going to finish a review of the GTEC A10T. This is a multicolor printer. You can have up to three different colors, and you can print one color at a time or up to three. So, now I did already do a live unboxing. It's right here, and let's just say it didn't really go according to plan. But if you'd like to see the assembly, I would suggest referring to that video. But uh, GTEC did send this printer out to me, and my reviews are my own. So let's take a dive into it and see if it's worth buying. You did get some assembly instructions, some spare nozzles, uh, spare PTFE tubing, USB cord, some spare bolts, but you do not get a SD USB card reader. Nope, and no clippers either. The standard dimensions on this is 200 millimeter on the X and Y and 250 millimeter on the Z. Pretty standard little uh, printer we have here. The overall look in the machine is pretty solid looking. Um, it does uh, have this weird like uh, Frankenstein look to it, like it's going to inject some bad chemicals into someone's body. But I kind of do like it. As we get to the top of the machine, you'll see the three stepper motors for the extruders and they fastened with T-nuts to the top. And then you'll see that we also have three filament runout sensors. When we get to the base of the machine, you'll see that we have three separate spool holders. These are all provided with the kit. This printer is equipped with a 360 watt power supply, but this is a Ching Ling power supply. And if you see my other videos, I'm definitely not a fan of this type of power supply. Well, it's a standard Marlin display. It kind of has this, uh, 80s car stereo look to it, backlit, you know, yellowish green tint to it. Um, I mean, it's just another thumb wheel clicker. So, I, the only thing that's really different on this is uh, you get this uh, mixer control here where you can actually mix the colors, the three different colors, by percentage or whatever you want to do for the mix. Um, so, we'll just keep it at the default for right now. And then you can also do a gradient. We could do a gradient mix. You could say when to start and stop. And then you could do it here as well. But uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty unique. Uh, but you can also do all this within the software for GTEC as well with your mixing app. The machine is quite loud. It doesn't have any silent steppers. And you'll notice that all the PTF the tubing goes into one nozzle. There's not individual nozzles for all three colors. So you will see um, how this works out a little bit later in the video. Here's my bench of boom nerd. <laughs> I tested, I mean, I actually have more than this, believe it or not. Um, I tested so many of them and I was getting such bad streaming in. It was, <laughs> I mean, the print looked great. But man, look at how bad this is. I was fiddling with the retraction and the temperatures and and they were just all oh, coming out so bad. So that's like so I canceled a lot of them. You know, and I was just also messing around with the different heights of and colors and and everything. And uh, yeah, even here this this one was coming out okay and then it you know, nozzle collided and down she went. So I'm, I'm wondering why are all these looking so bad? I mean, again, I was messing around with the retraction, the temperatures, and going off of uh, what forums were saying. And then I was like, okay, let's just watch the print. Then I saw something on the display. Yeah. Want to check this out. You noticed in uh, right there, it just switched to 215 degrees. So now I have to go back to tune, and now I need to bring it back down to 195. Yeah, I wish I would have caught this earlier, and it would have saved me a lot of trouble with doing all these prints. Well, 
Yeah. So yeah, it, it went from um, from one ninety five to two fifteen. Once I saw that, I'm like, man, I wish I saw that earlier. I got a lot more success. I was messing around. This was me messing around in the settings on the display, seeing if I could just adjust it on the fly. But now you can see the bench heat came out a lot better. Almost no stringing at all. The transitions are nice from use the, the mixer for uh, um, the G Tech mixer. And you could just choose which layer the colors can change. You could do basically as many layers as you want of color changing. Came out pretty good. Again, this is my fault. So then I decided to just let it run through. And this is the stringing. I didn't pluck off any. Not too bad. So and then again, I messed around with it even more different layers. And the stringing was a lot worse than this. Um, I don't know why. Maybe the, the white wasn't stringing before, it is now, and the rest was fine. Let's see how it transitioned from the red to the blue. Kind of overlap there. But from, yeah, yeah, like the bottom. <laughs> but from, from the white to the red, it's pretty nice sharp and transition there. Let's go on to the next one. So I decided to print out a dog that's on the SD card. And this what this does is it does a blend. I used uh, the three sample filaments that came with it. There's a white, a black, and a gray. So I was watching this one print. I was like, man, this isn't doing anything. So I was messing around with the settings on the display to help mix the colors. And this is my fault right here. This is when I was saying, okay, force it to do something it was really dark in the garage and then saying like, okay whatever so, pretty disappointing and then um in the morning i decided to look at the model again and I, then i noticed something again this line is my fault please ignore it that's when i was messing around look at that that is pretty darn cool <laughs> and this isn't any tricks or anything it blended the colors. I mean, it literally, you know, you have the gray, white, and black, and it made a nice silver tone. Look at that. And the print quality is really good. You know, you got the, let's see, on the top, but you can actually see how it's merging some of the colors. And actually, you can see even, even better under the ears. Pretty cool. So I said, okay. I was running out of that filament, you know, it was my sample. So I decided to do red, white, and blue. A patriotic dog and uh <laughs> look at this that is pretty darn cool and it just goes right into like a, a purple hue i really think this is where the printer shines the the bottom layer that's gonna always look like garbage you're not gonna even with the benchies don't expect a good bottom layer with doing multicolor prints. So it's just not gonna happen. So I decided, okay, I've done um, the blends. And how about now let's do a gradient fill. So I decided to do the Rancor challenge. <laughs> it's like other people are doing it. You win a prize. And by the time this video comes out, it may not even be around anymore. But my first print, um, yeah, it didn't come out well. You know why? Because I forgot about that setting on the printer where it, uh, you know, I set the filament at, you know, for 195 temperature, brought it up to 215. Yeah. So I caught it. Luckily, I caught it early on, but look how bad the stream was. A bit bad. I mean, the, the bottom looks okay. And again, this is red, white, and blue filament. And see, I guess I left a little bit of uh, red on there. So I decided I only wanted to transition from white to blue. So I'm stringing down here. 
But I noticed with this printer, the longer it goes, look how clean the print got. So it, it came out pretty darn good. Um, I think for, you know, when you were doing the transition print, you know, for a gradient or, you know, comes out pretty darn nice. A little bit of shrinking on top, but this is at, actually at 60%. So I just wanted to get the print out. You know, it's at 60 millimeters per second. Came out pretty nice, except for the, again, the bottom here. I don't understand why uh, at the beginning of these prints it, it looks like this, but. The Cura profile that I'm using is uh, actually the one that uh, you can select within the printers. So I did the GTEC uh, A10T in the drop down, and I just using their default one, and I'm doing a retraction of um, of five. So, but yeah, not too bad. We have the GTEC color mixer. Now you can assign layers to colors. We did the gradient. Okay, it's still with the color mixer. And then we did the, another color mixer through the whole model. There we go, that one looks better. It doesn't have that line in it. So, yeah. So each of these, and when you're doing a color, when you assign colors on a model, you're gonna need what's called a prime tower. What this does was, after it does these sections, it's going to prime the nozzle, and then it's going to switch to color. So this prime tower was set to only 20 millimeters of filament. I was watching a purge, and at first I was like, oh, it's not too bad. When I saw the first layers coming down, the bottom layer, I wasn't too worried about. And then I was like, okay, I don't know. But you can see how, <laughs> well, the white isn't exactly white. So I canceled it. I said, okay, apparently it's not purging enough. So I canceled this print. Then I decided to do a 40 millimeters. So I'm looking at it coming off on the printer, and I was like, wow, it actually looks white. And then when it went to the red eyeballs, <laughs> you can see what's happening here. It just bled. Apparently doing 40 millimeters wasn't enough. And this this is a lot of film in here. It's purging. So, I mean, it's purging basically after every layer. It comes here, it purges, and then goes back again. And uh, it's like, oh, man, how much more how much more filament do I need to purge out of this? Because this isn't individual um, you know, uh, nozzles here. They're sharing a nozzle, so you gotta purge all this filament out. I said, okay, let's do another test. This is a 60. And I was running out of white, so I said, okay, let's do this. I mean, you know, this looks great, but these are supposed to be white eyeballs. Yep, <laughs> even doing 60, a 60 purge. It's still, I could not get the white out. But if you're doing darker colors, I mean, look how nice this model printed out really nice. I mean, even the bottom. Look at that. I mean, it's this this machine will print out a real nice model. I mean, look how nice and sharp this is. So it is just getting rid. <laughs> you know, if you have a light, light color, I just don't know if the machine could really purge the nozzle clean to get rid of it. I really don't know how how, how long it has to be. You know, is it 100 millimeters or what? I mean, you look at the size of this. That is a lot of wasted filament to do a multicolor print. You could probably at least print in another one. But, yeah, it's a... Uh, Definitely uh, <laughs> something to mess around with. So cool. what are my thoughts of the GTEC A10T? This uh, three-in-one color printer. Well, it does do its job, and it does print 
rather well. I mean, I think the best prints that come out of this is when it combines all the colors. And honestly, the print quality is really good. And it's just pretty stunning to look at and how it transitions. Like here, I was using red, white, and blue. And it just goes from red to purple. It's pretty darn cool. I really like that feature. And again, you can use their software where it blends the colors or it could um, just change the colors per layer. And it does the gradients really well too. I should pick a different color for this. It looks like it just ran out of filament, but uh, I mean, it transitions here from white to blue and dark blue. So it does a pretty good job. And then you could assign the layers with their software, their color mixing software. And you could just keep, you could go from layers from one to 60, and then 61 to 100, 101 to 130. Just do as many layers as you want. And it does it pretty good. Now, I think where the struggle it has is when you're doing assigning the colors in a model. Now, not to really struggle, I mean, the, the crispness of the lines is fantastic. It really is. It's the purging that's the problem. Since all filaments go through one nozzle, I, I tried going from 20 to 40 millimeters to 60 millimeters purging of the colors. And it's still, for my whites, I could not get it white. So, yes, there's um, there's some problems with that. With uh, but it, as you see, when you're doing the darker colors, it just came out bright. So really, falls short for me is the waste of filament. If you're doing just two colors here, or most likely another third darker color, I think it's going to work out a lot better. But once you go to the lights, I don't know. I just don't know if it's going to work out for you. But uh, now. Is it worth the $300? That's the ultimate question, right? This is a review. And I'm borderline saying no, it's not. The build quality of it, it's just not that great. So let's go ahead and go through it. Let's start from the top here. The extruder motors. Okay, the extruders themselves look like they're just going to fall apart. They're just not that well built at all. Then cable management, it's just not that great either. Then we go to the power supply. This is a 360 watt power supply driving all this equipment and I really think that it needs to at least be a mean well on there. A better power supply than what it's got. The bed. The bed itself is so flimsy. The springs are really, really bad and it, getting that first layer down is a pain. The display. Oh, it could be a little bit better but it is functional. But the problem is, is that I would do my uh, load my printer profile on there and I would set the temperature to 195 and then the printer itself says nope it's gonna be 215. I couldn't <laughs> it drove me nuts every time before I would print I had to go and change that setting down again every time and it does have the newest firmware on it so yeah there's some needs for improvement on this printer uh, again it's it's a shame because I can see the potential of it and you know again with the multicolor prints it's it does a pretty good job but uh, otherwise um, no I, I it's a uh, do not recommend until they fix these problems so I really appreciate you tuning into tripods garage and I hope you found this review helpful if it you did just please be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and all that other garbage that to, we all ask you to do so we'll catch you the next time have a pleasant day, evening, or weekend, or whenever you decide to watch this video. Thank you again. Have a good one. It's been so long since you've been doing this on camera. Oh, yeah? Oh, well, you're such a good boy. You're such a good boy.